Uh, good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Zoom Inget Zoom series. Today, our guest is Associate Professor Dr. Ali Karakash, who is currently working at Me- Mehmet Akif Arso University, Burdur. Ali Hujam is also a postdoctoral member of the Center of Global Englishes, Southampton University, UK, where he also got his PhD degree. His main interest areas are global Englishes, English as, li- as a lingua franca, language policy, and teacher education. The title of his talk this evening is Real World English Meets Social, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Meets School English Insights from a Collaborative Research Project. Thank you, dear Aloha for being our guest this evening. And welcome again. The screen is you. all yours. Thank you so much, Ujjam. It's my pleasure to be here and thank you for your kind invitation. I hope you're going to make it tonight and come to the end of the session safely. <laughs> so without losing time, let me just get started, Ujjam. There are some video files as well, so I need to just share the sound as well. So I guess you can all see the screen right now. Let me just enlarge. If everything was okay, I'm going to just start. I know, John, can I continue? Okay. So as I know, John just introduced the title. We're going to just look at how real learning actually meets school English, what we can do at the micro level, together with the certain actual stakeholders, by which actually I mean the language teachers, the principals of the school, and certain actually stakeholders at the university level. So here is the outline of the talk. As you already know about the importance of English all around the world, also including in Turkey, I'm going to keep these two sections very short, but it will help us to contextualize where the project that I'm going to mention actually fits into in this wider, actually, let's say, dominant role of English. And then I'll just move on to the project itself, the stakeholders, the scope of the project, and some key findings from the project. As you must actually, or you might know, willing to communicate student satisfaction, their feelings and views about having international students in their classes once a week. So I'm going to give you the detail later, especially when I start talking about the project. I also share some pictures taken from the classes and dire quotations translated, of course, in the translated version. But I like using the metaphor English is like a spider. The reason I use this metaphor because it just spins its web all around the world. And as we already know, it's the global language, the global franca, making it actually influence and impact felt in various domains, primarily the domain of education. And I don't I don't want to talk about all these details, but we know that English is not right everywhere. We cannot even escape it. I know John kindly shares lots of actually funny, you know, images, cartoons, even from Turkey. So because of such actually global, you know, widespread division of English, no countries actually can dream in indifferent, right? Especially in terms of foreign language education policies. I'm going to approach these actually policies using these three actually interrelated levels at the macro level, responsible institution of, of you know, Turkish public is Minister of National Education. And later on, in the next slide, I want to some of the actual attempts and initiatives taken actually by the Minister of National Education towards foreign language education within the wider actual scope of education reforms. But I'm going to keep them again very short. So at the level, the institutions, the schools, the universities, what we can do together or what they have been doing so far. But at the micro level, actually, this is my concern, especially when I just start talking about the project, you're going to see the teachers, right? What we can do as teachers, teacher trainers for the betterment of the language proficiency in Turkey. So I'm going to give you some kind of tips and just talk about what we have done so far in a small province in Turkey. So just briefly to summarize what have been done so far by the Minister of Education. As you said, there were the attempts like to increase the course hours, decreasing the age of actually starting to learn English, in different education reforms. So I didn't go actually further, just started with this 1997 education reform. And then in the 2005 education, of course, there was always a dimension for foreign language education, the compulsory high school period, 
where the you know the course hours were say increased. And finally, <laughs> as we all know, this model very well is four plus four plus four plus, uh, like a football actual lineup. You know, English now is actually introduced to the second graders, but so far we haven't actually seen the results, the outcomes in very specific data in concrete forms. Still, we need more research actually, but. The most maybe recent one is the turn into like turning these fifth grades, the transition to actually secondary school into intensive English language program, the introduction of intensive English language curriculum, where students will get fifth of English classes. But currently, it's, I guess it's still in this stage of this pilot thing. There are certain schools selected in this, and we're gonna see the results as well. But I am hopeful about this. But of course, it is all about whether we might just increase the number of courses or we just introduce intensive language curriculum, it's about how we run these classes, especially in line with these curricular objectives. So apart from these education reform, curriculum reforms, we've also seen attempts from the Minister of National Education that actually aim to integrate right technology into the classrooms. It was once very, at that time I was at the university about the graduate from the department, and this five project, you know, you know, the classrooms were supplied with the technological devices, interactive smart boards. Both students and teachers were actually distributed tablets, but <clears throat> they just proved themselves to be useful at certain local actual areas, but they couldn't reach this nationwide success, unfortunately. And we don't know what happened to these tablets right now. I'm not sure. And later on, there was another initiation again by the Minister of National Education, the project for the employment of 40,000 foreign teachers in 2011. This, most of you might know this project was never put into effect. I think it's mostly because of these financial costs and there was also lots of reactions from the education bodies, from the teachers who were not uh, appoint, appointed. So again, but the purpose was, the intention was good, right? To help learners to improve their speaking skills especially these teachers were actually said to act like language assistants, company language teachers in the classrooms, establishing like English cafes. The idea was good, but it was not actually the right time. Maybe it was also not fair when there were lots of unappointed language teachers in our country. The recent another initiation was this education region 2023. And for each kinds of actual branches of education, there are some major goals and sub goals, and it also includes foreign language education. As you see here, there are three major goals. And one of these goals is actually about goal two, the use of, with the use of new sources, students will be allowed to experience the English speaking world. And right now we are in 2022. I am not sure there's just one year left, for 2023, to what extent these goals actually have been accomplished or achieved so far. And as far as I know, most of these actually goals and sub goals have not been achieved. It's just look so nice or polish on the paper, but we'd like to see something like right, concrete materialized into practices. But so far, unfortunately, we couldn't see anything. But the intentions are good, but intentions are not enough. We need to see actions steps taken by the Minister of National Education. So in line with these actual initiatives by curricular reforms, there are also immediate and regular changes in the curricula for English language teaching at the secondary, primary, including high school levels. Now let's take a look at some of the curricular objectives, right? In the recent ones, 2018. Let's start with the primary and the secondary school. We see a shift right, from grammar-based or, you know, traditional language teaching to language to being taught as a means of communication. Again, it looks so nice. It makes sense. It's reasonable and feasible. This is what other countries are actually doing. And also encouraging authentic use of the language in an interactive context and displaying English as it is used in real life, but we don't know what is meant by in real life whether it's been actually done or actualized, realized in classrooms, but this is what the curricular actually statements say. But this is quite important, right? Especially from an effective domain, making learning English interesting, engaging and fun, especially for young level learners. 
And more or less similar actually curriculum objectives might be found in the high school English language teaching curriculum. It is like a continuation of the primary and secondary curriculum. Again, the focus is on fostering, boosting communicative skills. And there's also these explicit statements like accepting the current role of English as a lingua franca. But the question is whether we can teach it as a lingua franca, as a global language, or in a way that a global language should be taught in classrooms. <coughs> and here there's this confession and self criticism. You know, it is often stated that in Turkish EFL education context, priority, importance, you know, has been given to grammatical competence. We too much focus on teaching and assessing grammatical structures in English. And as far as we know, this is still the case. Not much has actually changed since then, to be honest. But the intentions, again, are so good, like taking all aspects of communicative competence into consideration in English classes. And after this, I'm going to share or a summary of the results, British Council and TEPA, then we're going to see to what extent actually these ideals actually have been put into practices in Turkish classes based on these classroom data. And what I would suggest attracted my attention, there are a couple of phrases recurrently occurring or repeatedly used within this curriculum, like authentic assessment, learning autonomy, task-based, project-based, and collaborative language activities. Again, these are nice, but we're gonna question whether they are actually put into effect in classroom. They take, just take place in language classrooms or in most language classrooms. I don't wanna generalize, but uh, as, far, as far as I can observe, when I just go to schools for you know, students, to observe my students, most often this is not the case. It's most like this is traditional classrooms, teacher fronted, teacher led classes, students are passive, So when we, if uh, I'd like to summarize the key points actually, right, in terms of English and its role and how it should be taught, there are a couple of important points, which are also highlighted in different actual like, education reforms. First thing first, we have to help students develop positive attitudes, right? Part of the curriculum objective in the previous one. Raising students' linguistic awareness, cultural awareness. We're just talking about the global lingua franca spoken by different nationalities in diverse ways. But as I'm going to show you later by you know what I mean by school English, we will see that school English is quite different. Actually, it prevents learners developing their awareness about these differences because we only provide one version of English, the bookish English sometimes, what I call in my classes. So especially these, the individual interests, needs, abilities, what these students can do and where and when they can use English and with whom. These questions are also important. <laughs> but the effective ones, especially, I think they may be more important than the others because if you don't like something, if you don't feel favorable about something, probably you're not going to make any effort towards that direction. The question again, to what extent have we achieved the curricular objectives? Based on a number of studies conducted in Turkey, empirical research, also a nationwide survey based on these, uh, let's say, observational data, questionnaire data. The answer is not a positive one. Probably we have not achieved the curricular objectives to a large extent. And to summarize, there is not is actually, you know, standards in terms of teacher practices, the resources are different, especially on the part of learners, we observe that they lack this motivation, interest in learning. They just keep question, where shall I use English? This is where the problem starts actually, because we cannot provide them a genuine and real need for using English or, or, or just finding answers to the question, what will I do with English? Where will I use it? So because, especially at a young age, especially at the level of high school, students are quite instrumental, like pragmatic. They like to see the benefits of doing something. When they do something, they expect some returns. But unfortunately, when it comes to teaching English, students cannot see these returns actually. So another problem, negative attitudes towards English itself and learning it. Most of the students just see it as a kind of a subject matter, like maths, geography, what they are concerned is just to pass the class. That's it. 
But I guess in this, we also, the teachers have a part, the way we just teach the English, the way we run the classes might play a part because it also depends on how we teach English. Or do we teach English or we, do, do we teach about English? That's the main problem. And the ultimate result, we always actually see in most actually English proficient indexes, Turkey sits at the lowest ranks. Here, there's a summary, as you might just see, 2021. Out of 112 countries, we just sit at the 70th place. This is the global ranking. And in terms of our position among European countries, we are out of 35 countries, we just sit at the 34th. Just maybe before Azerbaijan, and I don't, I'm not sure whether we can count Azerbaijan as a European country, but this is where we sit in terms of the general proficient levels of Turkish citizens in Turkey. <clears throat> this is the problem. What, what good would English do to me? English So that was the main concern actually for us for creating the project. But we have seen the curriculum objectives. So what about the practices, classroom practices, what's happening? I'm just summarizing the results of this study because this is quite comprehensive based on closing observations of eight English language classes across different states. But I'm not going to spend much because you already know what I'm going to say, what happens in classrooms, more or less in general. There are always specifics, there are always exceptions. But we know that most teachers adopt these traditional approaches, and there are sometimes external reasons, like the examinations. Sometimes the examinations actually force or enforce teachers to adopt such kind of teaching or such kind of fitting methodologies, because what you actually assess at the end of the day is the grammatical knowledge, right? Reading comprehension, vocabulary knowledge, and even our central examination from language. Alo Jam, I'm sorry, can you please unmute yourself? Alo Jam. Unmuted. Yes, thank you. Ojam, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Ojam, that's the impact of heavy rain in Burger on internet connection, I guess. That's <laughs> okay. I get the warning, your <laughs> I'm, connection. I'm sitting in the dark, so <laughs> that's okay. We can manage this, Ali Ojam. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let me just continue, right? Okay, it again all comes down to our practices and sometimes external forces that also shape our practices, right? Because the families, the parents are also concerned, you know, the kids, the children will take these exams. But now if you just include the speaking component, they get actually troubled. Well, John, there's no speaking part in the exam. What are you doing? You're just wasting the time. Or the role of English in centralized exams is also diminished. So this is another factor. I know, John, if there's any problem, please don't hesitate to just intervene and step in, John. Again, repeated learning about grammar points, few identifiably useful outcomes, decontextualization of vocabulary, even the way we teach vocabulary sometimes quite traditional, despite the fact that we have all these technological devices, smart boxes, interactive boxes. But again, you might have the resources. It all just comes down to how you use the resources. <coughs> Classroom interaction, I guess there's no need to talk, mostly teacher led, and Turkish is a major characteristic. And sometimes the teachers, not all teachers, of course, most teachers just use Turkish to teach English. I've seen many of my students now, most of them are actually uh, serving as in service teachers. They were just teaching grammatical items, grammatical points using Turkish making diagrams, explaining present perfect continuous, talking about the impact, where an action started, where the action has ended. It was quite a boring actual class, even for me to observe. And in terms of materials, the curriculum makes lots of suggestions, but the observations shows it is mostly coursework dependent, followed by the smart board. But smart words, my observation, no, it's quite limited. Again, I like to avoid generalizing, but most of the teachers use a smart boss just in the form of PPTs that actually reflects the course books. It is a little bit you know, interactive. You just touch the screen 
but the content is the same, more or less. So this is not an effective use of actual smart board videos, PC, internet. Again, as you see, quite limited in terms of usage in the classroom. How about assessment? Maybe another major actually factor that influences the teaching practices. The curriculum suggests alternative, up-to-date, contemporary assessment tools, but our assessment is mostly based on, again, assessing students' grammatical knowledge, multiple choice tests, fill in the blanks. Sometimes we also assess not only English, but students' attention to the detail. It has nothing to do with English. There are lots of tests like this. I've collected some samples. So the end result on the media, I don't know such kind of news very much. Sometimes she kindly shares on her you know, Facebook page. The end result is not so satisfactory. <laughs> so this was the main concern in our local, actually, university and with the teachers, English language teachers that we are acquainted through these actual teaching practice courses, we just said, okay, what we can do, right? We might just do something with the, at the micro level in our own context with our own students. But before that, I'd like to just show how I distinguish school English and real English based on actually these results. School English, as far as I can see from the study findings, my observations, mostly grammar-based, native speaker oriented and special standard english oriented if there's a listening component mostly the teachers prefer to make students listen to these speakers heavily rely on course books workbooks manuals and often lacks authentic communication even sometimes teachers avoid using classroom language in english like open the book go to page blah blah blah, blah. such kind of instructions even take place in turkish in some cases it's rather formal and intensive, but when we look at the real world English, the English used outside the classroom, it is inherent and diverse in terms of speaker profiles, in terms of the English is used, right? Because at school, we insist on using this grammar English or grammar based English, but when students are acquainted with this real life English, English in video songs, they got surprised because whatever we teach, even native speakers do not follow these in movies, in songs. And communication focus, because students have, are you know, free, they actually choose content out of their own interest, and they mostly actually get engaged for pleasure, like playing games, for example, listening to music. Nobody is forcing them. So often rely on these really authentic resources, and there is a real need to use language for a gamer, right? understanding the instructions is quite important. So out of these kind of actual needs, they look up the words, they use the words. There are also games, uh, interactive games, game just talk about the team members give themselves or the others, the team members directions, instructions. This is actually what lacks in school English, but more importantly, I guess I forget the include is school English is often associated with these adjectives like boring, no, boredom on the part of learners. So this was the main idea, especially the idea, original idea, I should give the credit to our then Dean of the Faculty of Education, Sveloja, Professor Sveloja. She actually suggested, you know, we should do a project like this. She also got a PhD from an American university. So she was so open to such kind of collaborative projects. And the provincial director of the Minister of Education, again, then now is not here. We signed an agreement. I was the institutional coordinator of the project, and my role was to find the students from language education department and from the university, from other actual relevant branches of the university. I will share what we did later. The purpose, actually, the purpose on a small scale, we'd like to actually engage students with these foreigners and motivate them, right? And increase their interest in learning English also have them and develop positive attitudes towards speakers of English. As you're gonna see, we had a diverse speaker profile at those times, including speakers from Nigeria, Ukraine, Russia. And even at times, there were so actually much high demand from some schools to get such kind of visits. We even sent Turkish students. The students whose speaking is quite good. We just gave them some nicknames. They also visited these schools. <coughs> 
but especially for the uh, from an active domain or effective factor, we wanted to have them these positive attitude, right? Start liking English English speakers and creating a kind of a real need to use the language. So the project partners in this regard, Primal the University and the Faculty of Education, a special our department, English language teaching. It was initially actually put into practice as a pilot project. There, were, there was only one school that we cooperated. I guess the English language teacher of the schools is already among us, Yasem Nojan. I should also give her the credits for her efforts. We worked together in cooperation. And then the project became very popular in Burger. So the schools were more interested and they like to have international, international students in their classes. And we also found some students through International Relations Office. Also, the finally, I, got, I found some students from Tamer, a group of Nigerian students. During the pandemic, they were having some of their classes on a face-to-face -face basis. I've just seen them while waiting the bus. I approached them, I just included some of them in the project. And even during the pandemic, we continue to actually run this project on Zoom as we are doing right now. I'm gonna show you some pictures. And from uh, the Ministry of National Education, we have the primary and secondary schools. Later on, another high school. Normally, we were planning to run this with the primary and secondary schools. But a high school principal just came to see us at the university and just saw some of the you know, local news. And he was so eager to be part of the project. And we found some students for this school as well. So within the scope of the project, first of all, we tried to find the foreign students at the Faculty of Education. Our, prior to, our priority was to find students at the Faculty of Education, regardless of their departments. The reason was because since they're gonna be teachers, they have these didactic skills, pedagogical skills, and they're receiving courses in teacher education. But when the demand was high, we also found students from other departments. We selected the schools. We met the students with the schools. We had gatherings and official meetings. We just decided who is going to visit which school at what time. We made such kind of weekly actually schedules and arrangements. And this was all actually done on a voluntary basis. These international students, students did not get any financial return. They were willing. And we actually made an eight week visit plan in our actually initial project in our piloting stage. And the focus was not just on speaking and vocabulary. These students did not actually get involved in teaching grammar. Whenever they just and just teaching vocabulary and speaking using English only. Of course, simplifying their language as much as possible. Alujam, I think um, your internet connection is not stable. Every now know. and then we lose your voice. Uh, okay, I think you're back. Are you back? Can Hojan? you say something? Yes. Okay, you're back. Can you hear me right now? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for warning. Uh... Gone again. <laughs> yeah, tonight is going to be full of surprises. I have warned you, my dear colleagues. It's because of the weather conditions, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, internet connection is horrible. Um, I don't have, we don't have any electricity. Our poly students, we even use our Erasmus students, our exchange students, include them in the project. And just to appreciate their time, their efforts, we just gave them the, we just gave them these certificates of attendance. And even, you know, being part of such a project made them quite happy. They initiated, they planned the class. So the students were actually speaking and learning in the meantime, following the curriculum, as we just say in Turkey. But there was no explicit grammar teaching. That was the most important part. So how did I just use this willingness to communicate skill? Before the project, I just gave these uh, scale to the students. And in total, there were 54 students. You might be actually say, okay, the number of persons might be actually quite low. The reason this is a very small school, 
at the outskirts of Burger, and most students come from low-income or middle-income families. And the students came from fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And the same scale was distributed to students at the end of this eight week after they had classes with these international students. So we wanted to see whether having classes with international students or having English courses in the company of these international students would increase their willingness to communicate, right? Would increase their willingness to use English, especially within and outside the classroom. These are the items included in the scale. I just include them in Turkish, but mostly, as I already told you, the items were about using English for any particular reason within the classroom, mostly, like answering the questions on a voluntary basis, helping their friends when they fail to answer the questions in English, again in English, making attempts to speak English with the teacher in and outside the classroom. I only did one item since they are actually visited by these international students. It was about getting pleasure, you know, having classes or willingness to speak with these actually teachers outside the classroom. So mostly classroom language and beyond the classroom, interacting with the friends and classroom teacher, classroom English language teacher, plus the international students. And the results to communicate. This was something quite positive for us because we actually expected this based on our observations. Even during the breaks, most of the students were actually chasing these international students just to communicate. And you would just see that, you know, how willing they were, even just communicating with these students using just content words. There is no grammar, but this is what we want. They should not be stuck with like formulating syntactically correct, you know, uh, sentences or discourse markers. We're not actually concerned about it. We just want them just to take the step and talk, whether they mistake, make mistakes or not, it doesn't matter. Also gave them a student satisfaction survey. Again, it was all about to what extent these students are actually happy, satisfied with having classes. As you might just see, the highest mean scores, they were quite actually happy, you know, having classes with these students. And they just actually said, you know, they would also express that, you know, they like to have such students in other classes as well, because they would only visit the school once in a week, a couple of class hours. And most students actually reported finding such kind of physics, you know, quite useful. <laughs> and especially here, item six, you might just see that they were actually again, expressed their satisfaction in terms of meeting with people from different cultures, from different linguistic backgrounds, even They've just seen and noticed the diverse ways of using English. A Nigerian student, a Ukrainian student, their Englishes are quite different, but still they speak English, despite all the differences. Here again, they posted actually feelings about the visits, and most of the students actually want these students to come to their school again in the following year. But most of these students actually graduated when the project was over, the initial phase was over. And actually this reflects the curricular objectives, right? Creating entertaining classes, making classrooms enjoyable. And we're gonna see the details when we look at the quotes from the qualitative interview results, we will see why they think so actually. Here we just see the general view, but the details will come soon. But this was quite important to know, item 15, most of the students actually, agreed with title right this is the first time they just use english for a real for a genuine reason for a genuine purpose also increasing the motivation again to my item they felt quite motivated when these you know these students were present in the school and out of these students 54 students we interviewed 15 students actually this interview were actually carried out by our student teachers who were visiting the school as part of the teaching practice course. So since they already know each other, they got acquainted. So I just thought maybe they could just talk to the students and they could get much more elaborate answers. As a researcher, I would be like a foreigner. So the interviews actually carried out by our students in the final year. 
So the major themes, again, they refer to this fun element, opportunity for languages, the possibilities towards language and establishing report, all actually are in line with these critical objectives. I think we might just manage to do this at a very micro level within a single institution. And that was quite actual satisfactory for us. This is what we actually plan to do. And if you demand it, we'd be more than happy actually. The fun element. So we understand actually these students, especially secondary level, they might be still maybe considered like young learners or late young learners. They are quite into these playing games, repeatedly used by students, right? Playing games, I was please playing games, listening songs. So especially here, we did nothing else. By this, actually students refer to not learning English in the way they've just learned before, right? Focusing on grammar, tenses, prepositions, if conditions, blah, blah, blah. Because when they start learning English in second grade, as far as we observe, there's less concentration emphasis on the grammatical knowledge. So this is the way they actually like learning English because initially they start like this, right? They play games, they use TPR techniques, bodily movements, actions, but later on, when they face grammar, they lose their enthusiasm and motivation. English becomes something like maths, formulaic expressions, formulaic rules, and this is actually among the learners. Another category of students actually report to about the opportunity for languages because we know that you know when the teacher is Turkish and students are Turkish, they immediately switch to Turkish. So they don't even make extra efforts. They just take the easy way out and just switch to Turkish. <laughs> Here there was, a, it, this is a Turkish teacher, of course, I just used a nickname. So students were actually quite happy with the chance that, you know, they could use English, although the use of English was quite limited, maybe at the level of words or word boundaries, sentence level. This is still something like a progress for the secondary schools. The positivities, the favorabilities towards language. Like this, because you know, see all these actually, Themes are related, especially st student 11. I didn't like English before, now I like it very much. So we might just see the role of the teacher right, in a student's life and how a student actually form a fit. We might just see how teachers play a great role. And students who like English, they said they even, you know, like English more than before, thanks to the visit of these international students and their company. If no, John, can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I can hear you. Because there are regular, you know, warnings. Your connection is disabled, something like this. Yeah, yeah. So I have to make sure. Thank you, Dr. John. All right. Another category was about establishing rapport, like maximizing similarities, you know, minimizing the differences. And this is actually what they liked a lot because they didn't see these students like they authentic real language teachers. They found them quite approachable. And as student 13 just put, they're like friends. So probably this is what we need to write, friendly approach to the learners. I'm not sure because there are not the specific details because these students were younger than most of the class of English language teachers. Age maybe might be another factor, but this is just my assumption. I don't have evidence for this. <clears throat> Another interview result, again, opinions about the contribution of the project, students in the skills. Most of students reported about developing their vocabulary learning and increasing their speaking proficiency. Some even believe that their academic success in the classes in terms of getting high marks, you know, academic success increased. And to me, this is the most important one. They have actually gained awareness about the current role of English as a global language. You're going to see it in the golden quotes sometimes in here. Here, they just said, yes, it was quite limited, two hours, maybe 80 minutes, but still they had the chance to use English, right? A couple of words, maybe one or two single sentences. This is something quite important for these learners. In terms of economic success, several students said after having classes, probably 
the success might have been increased in, in line with their positive attitude towards English. Because sometimes we experience this. We have students, you know, maybe they're not academically successful despite their efforts, but they still make extra effort if they love the teacher, if they love the class. This is quite actually possible, probable. Students make extra efforts in such cases. That might be the reason as well. And here, actually, student six notes it, right? I studied more and more <coughs> and started getting high grades. Sometimes this is just done just to please the teacher. Because students love the teacher, so they have this purpose in mind to please their teacher, maybe increase their report or have you know better relations. This is what they actually think about their English and how their English improved. So this is the news about the states of English. And here, most of the students, actually several students made similar remarks. I didn't want to speak English in classes before because everyone speaks Turkish. This is what I meant earlier, actually. But after I studied with four students, I realized that English can be spoken even in Vurdur. So you might just see how desperate these students are about speaking English in their own context. But now it's quite probable to come across non-Turkish people in Burger, well, several Chinese people from Somalia, people from Syria, Afghanistan. <coughs> and here, I guess this was also quite important. We used to think of English as a lesson. It is a simple language, right? A language that's a subject we have to learn about, but now it has become a language spoken all over the world. Because you have a Nigerian in your class in Burger in a small state something the students have never experienced maybe before. <clears throat> Again, we might just see that, you know, when they face these students from different language backgrounds, they had some trouble understanding their English, especially Nigerian students. But later on, they get used to them, right? This highlights the importance of familiarity. But as I earlier said, if we just include these diverse in our classes, in listening texts, in listening audios, students will get familiar with any kind of accents actually so what is perceived as difficult might be perceived like easier in the long term of course it's not going to happen overnight but at least we should make the effort and teach if you just refer things to as a global language we should also teach it as a global language a global language deserves let's say to conclude before the electricity done in line with these curricular objectives, we have actually tried to <clears throat> put a project into life so that we can actually help learners you know, develop positive attitudes and actually see that even in Voodoo, they might use English because most of the time they were desperate. They were actually asking these questions. What are we going to do with this English? It's of no use. There's no point in learning English. I'm going to study something else. But having or spending some time with these students actually just uh, make them realize that English is not a school subject. It is a language. And as we just described, elf, a content language, right? And you might use this resource to communicate with anyone, not only with Nigerians or others or Polish students, Russian or Ukrainian students. So it is a tool. It's like, an, let's say, master key you know, that might open doors to learners, even in the local area without just leaving their home context, without just leaving their home countries. Students might have just this, actually, uh, the opportunity to engage with non-Turkish people and just by using English. But here, just if we just think about these levels again, macro, meso, and micro, often resistance comes from the micro level for these kind of projects, right? To initiate some change, right? Or, or if you like to, transform our practices first thing first teachers as teachers we have to be open to transformation and take some initiatives because it's easier to put the blame on somebody else on something else we might just blame the curriculum we might just blame the policies of the minister of national education but as an individual as the policy agent we should also consider what i can do in my local in my classroom right because sometimes the impact starts from the bottom. So I guess this is what we wanted to hear in Bordeaux with this project. And to a large extent, if the students are honest in their responses, we might have achieved this. And hopefully, 
It might also give some kind of inspiration to other speakers, to the others. And there are lots of other stuff actually being done right now by teachers. Because you might just say, okay, we couldn't find such kind of speakers or foreigners in our context. We have these online tools, actually, online platforms. Recently, I've made another talk, again, you know, how to include word English in the classroom. And I found an Instagram page, Malatya Mem. They have this speaking page, speaking club. One, I guess, again, on a weekly basis, they come together with students from different countries and they just talk. I guess if the teachers are willing, lots of things, lots of projects, activities might be done. But as I just said, it all just come down to human factor, the teacher in our case. So that's all for me, uh, almost 50 minutes. Thank you so much for sparing your valuable time and bearing with me. Devon, I'll jump over to you. Hello, Jam. Thank you very much. I'm here. I came back. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, lo I lost the connection twice. Uh, sorry, but uh, I tried not to miss anything. Uh, but again, Dev Noja is going to take over if I get lost. Uh, thank you very much, Ali Hoja. Wonderful presentation. It's kind of hurtful to hear these because now we understand even more that the teacher is the uh, milestone of everything. Uh, teaching, success, uh, motivation, whatever. Um, and I think this is like more uh, chicken and egg problem. I don't know what you think about it. Is it... You're totally right, actually. Maybe I might not just say, you know, these policymakers, you know, they often make decisions. But the problem, the policy agents, you know, those who are going to apply, implement these practices, their voices are not actually heard, right? It also applies to teacher education. You know, recently in 2018, they just made some changes in language teacher education program, but nobody asked us about, you know, whether the possibility, feasibility, to what extent it might be practiced or practical. It just, just you know, top-down approach. Somebody makes decision for you. You just task with implementing the decisions, but there are contextual differences. There are different needs across the country. However, I, I do I agree with you, but Ayojam, do you think we can expect the bottom to bring up the change if they are not competent enough? Ayojam, that's another issue. Yes, competence. That's true. And actually, I guess towards the end of the position, I just said sometimes the resistance comes from the bottom. We have also teachers. I'm so sad to say this, but based on my observation, they resist the jump. You might even remember, you know, you just came to Burjo to give a seminar yes. on course books. So John, we were there with the university students. They were really eager to listen to you because they know your name from these teaching English to young learner classes. I've just seen that the teachers just are there to put, you know, their signatures and leave as soon as possible. And at the end of the session, it was just you and me and the students you know, spending time. And of course, there were some teachers as well. This well, uh, in fact, uh, the, um, the compliments that I received from that conference were mostly related to my use of language <laughs> rather than the content. They were fascinated <laughs> by my ability to be able to speak in English for two hours. And your presentation uh, skills, how well, well, No, no, they, they were not even interested in that. They were just uh, fascinated, amazed. They were saying, Hoja, it's incredible. How did you manage to speak in English for two hours? I mean, I, well, uh, so that also shows what kind of a profile we have. Uh, yeah, I do What you just read, the teacher profile. We have, you know, English language teacher education programs, I guess, almost in any country right now. Yeah. It's also, I guess, you know, I don't know, maybe I might be wrong or right, reduces the quality because you have just three members of teaching staff. You have a program. The teachers are like high school teachers, 25 hours teaching. And yes. how competent they are, most of them are just near the graduate, like got the, you know, PhDs. This is a problem, Ujam. You have three teachers there, three teachers there. 
in Bordeaux in Sparta. Now you're trying to offer masters. Yeah. And this is reducing the quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, are there any uh, questions or comments, my dear colleagues? Uh, I cannot see any uh, in the chat box. Defno Ajam, can you see uh, any questions that I have missed? I guess there is a question by Azra Tajizi. Um, I'm, let me read it to you. Uh, how you make the students experience them in real life and move away from bookish type before applying this method, do you test their style types? This was at uh, around 8.30 when you were about to talk about the, the teaching method, I suppose, um, or the experiment you had. Uh, so this was the question. Well, John, if I'm not wrong, the question is about how I can move students away from bookish English, right? I guess so, yes. Actually, there are lots of ways, you know, when they come to the school, most of the students have this mindset, you know, as I already told, it's an ordinary school subject, like any other subjects, maths, but there are also some students who are already interested, they do their best, but the time that we spend in the classroom is quite limited. Therefore, we need these extracurricular activities, right, in line with maybe, might be because of, or in line with the students' interest, if we have students interested in watching movies, there are lots of movies, right? We might search the websites. We also have a couple of students who are interested in academic stuff. I always suggest, uh, I know students engage YouTube, TED Talks, ESL Video Labs. We have actually lots of resources. It's all about sometimes we are eager to you know, channelize learners towards the resources, but some learners are not quite interested. Out of, let's say, 60, there are just a couple of students who come and ask us, Hojam, I'd like to do this. Hojam, there's a student conference. Can we do something together? But out of, let's say, six, there is just a couple of students. Even though you know, we are just, once I tried to establish the speaking club with our students, there were only just five volunteer students, right? To do the formalities, to write the petition, to apply for you know funding this speaking club. And later on, you also lose your enthusiasm because it wastes my time and I do it for the students, but I don't see you know, much help, I don't see much interest, then you don't wanna do anything. So you just do whatever you do for your own, yourself or just for a couple of students. This is, I actually brings me to what I know John said, or teacher companies. Look, we have young academic staff and we are so willing to help our student teachers. You know, sometimes they just not, not so happy about the city because it's a very small one. But at least we are trying to do something for the professional development. We have this network with you know countries abroad. Sometimes we send them to projects for free. Erasmus Plus is youth work. But Hojam, sometimes we like to see that you know the uh, the demand should come from the students. If you're overgiving, let's say, they don't see the value of it. Well, Aliyah, don't you think actually they're surrounded by real English? I mean, Ujum, look at the YouTube by... videos, TikTok videos. I mean, uh, the movies, uh, video clips, um, music. I mean, songs. E English is everywhere. So, and young people uh, always follow these. They follow them more than they follow their teacher. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe most of the teenagers uh, are addicted to TikTok videos. Am I, am I wrong? Well, John might be, but I never use TikTok. I don't have an account. <laughs> uh, Ojam, like, you are a little bit uh, mature <laughs> to use TikTok. I do I not use it myself, but you have to do <laughs> Uh, but uh, definitely, I mean, uh, uh, we have some platforms that offer original language broadcasting. Uh, I do not want to give names here, but you know the companies. If you're uh, a member of those companies, you can watch the movies in the original language. Uh, you can even choose the uh, 
uh, what uh, subtitles in English or in Turkish, all depending on uh, your choice. So I think we are pulling them to bookish English, school English. If we, uh, most of them play video games, yeah, right? That's a right point. Yeah, you're right. Especially the current students, like the first graders. I guess we haven't received any students who have just started learning in the second grade. So I'm just quite curious, you know, when these students, right, those who started learning English in the second grade, came to the university, how would they be all, how would their English be like? Because as you see, when they said, especially in the first year, you know, it's a skill based program listening, speaking, reading, writing, grammar, contextualized grammar, but it never, it's never contextualized, it's just pure grammar. Yes. And uh, the, when I hit classes with the first graders, the first thing I say in the first, actually in the first introduction, in the first class, make English part of your life. Let's say you're interested in listening to music, listen to English music, but all kinds of, maybe you have, of course, favorite types of music, but then you surprise yourself with the register, with the vocabulary. Because as a teacher, maybe you have to have at least mm -hmm. basics about even medicine or jump. Students, we're going to talk about like drugs, but they don't even know the painkiller. I know they're not going to be medical doctors, but this is the basics, you know? A teacher should have basic English vocabulary about almost in subject. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can um, cooperate uh with the parents and then we can um channel our students interests in the correct way uh because youtube uh, definitely is full of resources but they need to find clean ones they need to find um uh, politically correct ones because you know, media literacy is a huge problem uh, and there may be some mis misinformation embedded in some of those videos and they may be uh, negatively influenced. So we need to be a good model for them and show them which ones are clean, which ones are good, which ones are um, trustworthy, uh, reliable, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then... Um, I mean, they will find hundreds of uh, materials to uh, be exposed to real English. Okay. Um, Mert Hocam has mentioned something about uh, paid teachers, ücretli hocalar. Uh, he has mentioned the something about, <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, they are not going to change because uh, they are not satisfied with their wage. They are not satisfied with the position, uh, things like that. Thank you very much, Marto Jam. It is a, a good point. Uh, anything else? I'm checking the chat box. They are not even teachers. Oh, okay. Oh, right. What are they then if they're not teachers? I guess what is meant is, let's say, there's a kind of, you know, shortage of English language teachers and you're a uh -huh. graduate of, let's say, chemistry in ah, English. okay. They might appoint you even as a language teacher. Mm, okay. Or international relations. They just assume that you know English, you might just mm. teach English. And maybe, nobody just mentioned, but also these teacher formation or these certificate programs, this is a huge burden, actually, on the shoulders of real teachers or, faculty, or graduates of faculty of education. From yeah. my perspective, maybe they might be diverse views, but these students already set their goals and do their best to become a teacher. Yeah. And to be able to enter the program, there are certain actually criteria to be met, and they meet these criteria. Those who fail to meet criteria take a shortcut, just pay for the certificate and get it. And they also claim they're teachers. Yes, they're teachers, but to what extent are they qualified? Yes. Because when I just look at the information certificate program right now, there are only two field specific courses, just two. But my students in the teacher education program get at least four in each, actually, in a term. Yeah. Well, uh, there are 
so many related issues uh, to talk about, but uh, I think I'm going to lose my light in a minute. Uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and ask, and if no, Jam can uh, ask, read those questions. Uh, I, I think I'm just about to get into total darkness <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> Uh, if you do not have any questions, we can close the session. I'm checking the chat box. Okay. Okay. Alo Jam, thank you. Uh, thanks a million. It was a very, very good uh, presentation, very good talk, informative. Um, I missed some of the parts, but Believe me, I'm going to watch the video <laughs> and uh, fill in those missed uh, parts. Thank, uh, you so much. thank you, my dear colleagues, for attending uh, and bearing with us. Uh, Jam, would you like to say uh, farewell and then we will close it? Thank you so much for kindly inviting me, hosting me on the Zoom series. I'm quite honored to be invited by you, especially. And that's all. I hope, you know, at least in my local context, I can do something, you know, for students to help them better the English language proficiency. This is what I can do in my own context. So probably if you just take similar steps, starting with our students, starting with our classrooms, starting with our schools, probably we might at least have you know, those around, them, you know, around us, surrounding us. Yeah. Well, uh, even as individuals, we can do something or maybe one thing but it is much better than nothing and since we also have the teacher educational identity you know we might even influence our student teachers mm -hmm. true you know they're going to become teachers in service teachers they will have students i guess the impact will get wider and wider thank so, you thank you so pleasure is mine and i wish you all the best in the Thank remaining you. day of the life. same. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get enlightened sometime very soon. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's going to be uh, like this all night long, but uh, at least. No, John, you're a star, so you don't need the. Like oh, this. I know, Jam. You are such a kind person. Thank you. Thank you, my dear colleagues. Take very good care of yourselves, and I hope you will always have light in your life. <laughs> bye bye everyone. That's a nice quiet and good job. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night.